Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash your matter butthole. And if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's dive straight into today's first story. Now, today's first story, I found it actually trending on Twitter, and conveniently being am I the arsehole post as well, I thought, well, we gotta read it. It's an absolute wild one that I loved. So I hope you enjoy it too, and let's get started. And it's from Throwaway Orange Cat who says, and it does follow with an update as well, titled, Am I the Arsehole? For Perpetuating Ethnic Stereotypes About Jorts. And before we get into it, if you'd like to follow Jorts, he's on Twitter, at Jorts the Cat. This post is about two cats who are named Jean and Jorts. And we'll start off with a bit of cat tax. The story, we have two workplace cats in one area of our worksite. They add value to the worksite, we all love the cats and the worksite cat's presence is not the issue. One of the cats, Jean, is a tortoise shell cat we have had for years. The other cat, Jorts, is a large orange cat and a recent addition. Jorts is just kind of a simple guy. <laughs> for example, Jorts can't open a door even when it's ajar. He shoves it whether he is going in or out. So often he closes the door he's trying to go through. This means he is often trapped inside the place he was trying to exit and meows until he is rescued. My colleague Pam, not her real name, has been spending a lot of time trying to teach Jorts things. The door thing is the main example. It's a real issue because the cats are fed in a closet and Jorts keeps pushing the door closed. Jean can actually open all the other interior doors since they are a lever type knob, but she can't open this particular door if she is trapped inside the closet. Torty Jean is very nice to poor orange shorts, and she has kept busy letting him out of rooms he has trapped himself in, so this seems easy to resolve. I put down a doorstop. Pam then said I was depriving Jorts of a chance to learn and kept removing the doorstop. She set up a series of special learning activities for Jorts and tried to put these tasks on a whiteboard of daily team tasks. I erased them. She thinks we need to teach him how to clean himself better and how to get out of minor barriers like when he gets a cup stuck on his head, etc. I love Jaws, but he's just dumb as fuck and we can't change that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Watching her try to teach Jaws how to walk through a door is hilarious, but Jean got locked in the closet twice last week. Yesterday I installed a cat cutout thing in the door and Pam started getting really huffy. I made a gentle joke about you can't expect Jean's tortoiseshell smarts from orange cat jaws. Which made Pam furious. She started crying and left the hallway, then sent an email to the group including volunteers and went home early. In her email, Pam said I was perpetuating ethnic stereotypes by saying orange cats are dumb and is demanding a racial sensitivity training before she will return. I don't think it's relevant, but just in case, Pam is a white person in a mostly minority staff and no, she is not ginger slash does not have red hair. Am I the arsehole for enforcing an ethnic stereotype by joking that orange cats are often dumb? Bloody Pam! I'm not sure where to go with this story. I mean, it's, it's definitely not the arsehole from me. In realistic terms, you should probably be documenting this behavior, but... Is anyone going to take it seriously? <laughs> Come on now. So I'm going to be really interested to see what the update's going to say. So we're going to cover a couple of comments straight away. And Nana Banana says, Not the asshole. You can't be racist against a cat or any animal for that matter. It's an animal. Jorts does not care if you think he's dumb. He will not report you to HR for orange cat phobia. <laughs> Pam, on the other hand, might. OP says, yeah, she already did. I'm swinging between absolutely roaring with laughter and feeling bad and unsure how much delicacy is needed to proceed. Pam is being an ableist and you're trying to provide Jort with a reasonable accommodations <laughs> pertaining to ADA laws. Personally, I'd love to see your boss have a diversity training meeting, but instead of people, it's all about different cat breeds. <laughs> Stress Relief says, not the asshole. I've never met an orange cat and that wasn't exceedingly dumb. Maybe a catologist can call into this thread and confirm that they are in fact stupid. But in this case, the cat is in fact stupid and she's just torturing the poor little guy. OP replies saying, I didn't go into much detail, fortunately, but he is exactly typical of an orange cat. He's big, chill, super friendly and exceedingly dumb. Sykes of People 2 says, not the asshole. And for the record, I am white and I have red hair. 
That's literally one of the funniest and craziest stories I have ever heard. By the way, if you do have the training, point out that you weren't stereotyping, but basing it on the individual behavior profile of Jaws. It's clear that Jorts needs more accommodations to enhance your effective communication with him, and Pam is just insensitive to this. It's well known that Siamese and Abyssinian top the list of intelligent cats, and that tabbies don't even make the list. You were just doing your best to identify and work with Jorts' unique needs. Whereas Pam isn't taking those into account, and instead trying to force the poor creature into behaving like Jean. You were merely trying to sort this out for Pam by mentioning the cat's colors and breeds so that she could work better with them by recognizing Jort's significant relative weakness. I gave you about 12 buzzwords relating to HR. Have fun. <laughs> now let's move on to the update to see what that says. So update. Thanks for responding to my query, which had truly upset me. I worked to have a good relationship with my team and the situation had gotten weird so gradually that I lost perspective. I just met with HR. She'd already met with Pam. HR was concerned about Pam's comparing ethnic stereotypes with giving a cat a doorstop and they addressed that which went well. HR will follow up to make sure Pam understands. The replies to my query were helpful to me for this discussion. HR also addressed Pam assigning other staff jorts related tutoring as it's not appropriate for Pam to assign others work. This also went well. We both think Pam had a hard time with the transition from volunteer to staff and may have new kid sensitivity projected to Jorts. Pam got emotional about her perception that I favored Jean over Jorts and gave specific examples. Some of these things are fair. Jorts deserves respect as a member of our team. There are three buildings in our workplace. Jean and Jorts are limited to one. HR told me that there were five holdouts about vaccines and restricting unvaccinated people from entering the building to protect Jean and Jorts was enough to win over four of them. That's crazy, but great. More importantly, the cat's presence greatly enhances our work with our clients and Jorts' friendly nature has been so great. Both cats truly are doing important work. Truly, Jorts deserves to be treated with respect. We all deserve to be treated with dignity at work, so I will apologize to Jorts about some things that were insensitive or disrespectful. A. Jean has a nice cat bed with her name on it, while Jorts has chosen an old boot tray in my office with a towel in it. Recently, a visitor put wet boots in the boot tray and Pam saw Jorts sleeping on the wet boots. I bought a bed for Jorts today and a name tag has been ordered. B. I will apologize to Jorts and remove the sign saying, Days since Jorts had a trash can mishap. Zero. Jorts likes to fish dirty paper cups out and he often falls into the bin and, or gets a cup stuck on his head, etc. He's able to get out of the bin by tipping it over so it isn't a safety issue. See, Jean's staff bio has a photo of Jean, while Jorts' bio has a photo of a sweet potato. <laughs> I did not actually know either cat had a staff bio, but we will use a photo of Jorts instead of a sweet potato. Oh my god, I've lost it. HR also suggested changing Pam's duties, so she is in charge of the cats. This I refused. The cats are my staff, not Pam's. I think Pam was well intended, but actually not meeting the needs of either Jean or Jorts, so they remain under my supervision. Pam is also not to put cups on Jorts' head or intentionally put him in, into frustrating situations given his unique needs. Lastly, and this made us both laugh so hard we can't deal with it in person, and will be said via email. Pam admits that she's been putting margarine on Jorts in an attempt to teach him to groom himself better. <laughs> this may explain the diarrhea problem Jean developed, which required a vet visit. Pam is not to apply margarine to any of her co-workers. <laughs> Jean has shown she is willing to be in charge of helping Jorts stay clean. If this task becomes onerous for Jean, we can have a groomer help. I am crying laughing typing this. Oh, me too. I am in tears. Added, I'm so glad this brought joy. Fan mail can be directed to jornsandjean at gmail.com or follow the Jorts and Jean joke account on Twitter at Jorts the Cat. Please do that. Oh man, that sweet potato thing, that absolutely sent me over the edge. <laughs> and we're going to finish this absolutely exquisite post with one comment from Owl Royalty who says, I can't believe she fucking buttered Jorts. <laughs> oh my word, I got to go on to another one. I'm losing it here. Thank you so much, OP, for sharing your story. That has absolutely made my day. Much love to you 
Jorts and Jean. <laughs> I don't know about Pam. Now our next story is from Throwaway Question 86 and it does have like a bit of an edit slash update at the very end of it. Am I the asshole for jokingly emasculating my boyfriend in front of his family? Throw away to protect the guilty. All right, so I, 28 female, have a boyfriend, 31 male, that I just moved in with earlier this year. We've been together for a year and a half. He's a good guy, mostly. We're not engaged yet, but plan to be sometime next year. That being said, I'm not really an easy person for anyone with strict gender role expectations to deal with. I'm career military and serve in a combat role, meaning I have to stay in a very good shape, so I lift and box for exercise. I'm not what you would call demure and I don't often soften my edges the way a lot of women do to make people comfortable. It's caused problem with dating in the past because of a lot of guys get weird about that. But my boyfriend has always seemed to take it in his stride and I love that about him. His family live nearby, so we spent Thanksgiving with them. They're more traditional and anytime I'm around them, there are always a few comments or something about me being different in some way. But I like them for the most part. Boyfriend gets uncomfortable sometimes. It's never been a problem before. I brought a smoked ham and stayed out the kitchen before dinner because I would be in the way, but told his mum to leave the dishes to me afterwards since she and his gran and sister had all done the cooking and should sit and visit. While I was sitting with my boyfriend and the men in the living room, his dad was asking about my work and told my boyfriend he'd better pop the question before they ship me off somewhere. That turned into his brothers ribbing him about being the little woman at home while I'm deployed. His dad said that being a military spouse is hard work. I agreed. I put my arm around my boyfriend and jokingly said that I thought he'd make a great Navy wife. It's a joke that he's made before himself, but he bristled immediately and was quiet until we left. Then he exploded on me and accused me of emasculating him and told me that the least I could do was let him be the man in front of his family instead of barging in with the guys where I'm not wanted and putting him down. We're speaking again, but he doesn't think he's wrong and wants me to hang out with the women at future gatherings and be normal. I can sympathize, but I think he's overreacting. Now, I think I'm gonna come at this one from two sides. I will say that I do feel like you're the asshole making your joke about that boyfriend obviously he didn't like it simple as that really but some of the comments he made also made in this situation where he said that he wants you to let him be the man in front of his family instead of barging in with the guys where you're not wanted and then says he wants you to hang out with the women in future gatherings and be normal those things did jump out to me so I am kind of leaning towards the everyone sucks here verdict. And we will cover that edit slash update after some of the comments. Mad Hatter 1391 says everyone sucks here. You need to know how to read a room. My girlfriend and I make all kinds of comments and jokes to and about each other when we're in private. Those comments change in front of friends. They change further in front of family. Always try to avoid embarrassing your significant other. He also overreacted big time and comes off a little insecure. Also, you can hang out with whoever you want to at gatherings. The whole women in the kitchen thing is so 1950s. Sam Spade PI says, I'm going with a mild everyone sucks here. He might have joked about being a Navy wife between the two of you, but I think you should have known not to say something like that in front of his brothers. Let it come from him, I mean. He was more of an asshole, however, for exploding on you after dinner. If he could control his temper all through dinner, he can control it when he's explaining to you why he was upset. And he's also the asshole for telling you to stop barging in with the guys. He shouldn't try to control whom in the family you feel comfortable talking to. OP replies in, I guess my thing is, if he doesn't like being teased like that, he needed to speak up for himself when his brother started it. He won't even mention it to them, but he'd yell at me. If he was uncomfortable, a simple, this made me feel bad and I know my brothers are dicks and won't listen, but I'd rather you not do this would be fine. Weft alright says, you're the asshole, gotta know your audience. His family is traditional and makes jokes like this to bring him down and make him feel less than because yours relationship is different. Of course it hurts his feelings, it's not cool that he exploded, but you should discuss how to handle this family as a united front so he feels like you've got his back. One Mike Nation says you're the asshole, you insulted your boyfriend in front of his family. Why'd you even need to ask if you were in the wrong here? OP replies then, because I don't see femininity as an insult. I'm a woman and I kick more ass than everyone in that room combined. It's only really an insult if you're being a wife or a woman as an insult. And I don't have no time to pander to people who think that. 
Bella Bell Bella says you're the arse or your whole post reads like a r slash not like other girls post and your comments reinforce that. That's great that you stand up for yourself and have confidence and do your own thing. That doesn't mean you're better than women who choose to be a stay at home mum or a corporate employee or anything else. Your husband was being bullied by his family. That sucks. He could have used you to be his rock in that situation. And one more from Mary Dom who says, you're the arsehole. I was gonna go with everyone sucks here, but your comments changed my mind. You're a difficult person and it seems that you really enjoy having your ego stroked and are willing to throw others down to get it. You admitted that you don't regret saying it. Your apology to him was half-assed. Sorry you feel that way and admit you'd do it again. You obviously do not need to stay in the kitchen, but you also don't need to pile on your SO and put him down. Teasing in private is one thing. Teasing with friends is two but don't put him down in front of his family. So the edit slash update bit says, interesting threads. I took some of the info and talked it over with my boyfriend last night. He's been thinking about it as well. The problem seems to break down into a few things. A, he grew up thinking he would have a relationship like his parents, being the provider and protect the role. And I don't need those things from him, so he doesn't know how to be. B, he's been feeling weird because he feels like his family almost likes me better than him. Despite the differences in lifestyle, I'm the first girlfriend they've ever pointedly invited to things. Asked about and said is a keeper and the only one his brothers would hang out with. He had some feelings over his dad bonding with me over vet stuff when he and his dad struggled a lot when he was younger. See, he likes the banter and he likes that I can jump in with him and his brothers and keep pace. But it bothers him sometimes that everything rolls off me so easily because it doesn't for him. And D, he feels like he doesn't measure up to my first husband. I was married to another service member who unfortunately died only a couple of years in. And he thinks that because he would be just the Navy wife instead of an equal, his words, I won't respect him as much. The subject of Thanksgiving came up with his mum the other day when they were making Christmas plans and she told him that she's heard him saying things to me in front of the family, that she would have slapped him and broken up with him on the spot over. And he should think about what he's actually mad about. So he has been and has decided that he's just not sure what his place in the relationship is. He knows the Navy wife comment was meant to be affectionate, but he was already feeling weird around his family that night with all that going on and lashed out at me. We've decided to table it, hold the banter on both sides for a while to reset and put off engagement talk until he decides whether the military spouse's lifestyle is something he actually wants to do. If he decides he doesn't, fair enough. It's better for both of us for him to figure that out now and avoid a worse situation down the road. And I wouldn't hold it against him if the answer was no. And it sounds like a pretty mature update to me. I'm not sure what I was expecting out of that update, but it sounds like they're, they're doing the right thing and, you know, tabling the engagement for the time being and just thinking things over with a bit of adult conversation thrown in there as well. But what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. Now, you're gonna have to brace yourself on this next title. This is from Apprehensive Fix 3425 who asks, am I the asshole for not attending my daughter's gender reveal for her lizard? This is literally really stupid, but she's really upset about it. So my 48 daughter, 23, has a blue tongue skink who she heavily adores. She jokingly refers to it as her daughter. I found it weird, but she says it's because it's the closest thing she'd have to a child and she feels a strong emotional bond similar to a child. She has decided to remain child free for multiple reasons and I have been very supportive of this decision. Well, she recently took her skink to the vet for a checkup and she was excited to find out her skink's gender. Afterwards, I got a text asking if I'd come to her gender reveal party she was having. She explained it was just a small get together with cake and food for her friends she hasn't seen in a while, with the gender reveal being mostly a joke and a way to make fun of real gender reveals. Well, I didn't come. I didn't see a point. It's just a lizard and I'm a busy person. She later called me and expressed that she was kind of sad I didn't come because it had been a while since I had seen her, but she understood I was busy. I told her she couldn't actually expect me to come to a gender reveal for a lizard. She said that it wasn't a real gender reveal. That was more of a joke and it was really just a small gathering to catch up with everyone. I told her if that was really the case, she should have just called it a gathering because I'm not coming to a gender reveal unless it's for a real granddaughter. She got quiet for a minute and then turned my words around, claiming I wasn't supportive of her decision to be child free. 
I told her she can't possibly expect me to treat a lizard as a granddaughter. She said she didn't expect me to, but it was clear I didn't respect her bond with her lizard and her decision. And she just wanted to see me and my reason for coming was hurtful. I told her she was being ridiculous over a lizard. She claimed it wasn't over the lizard and it was a gathering and not even centered around the lizard. But I stick to what I said. It's ridiculous to have a gender reveal for a lizard. She hung up and I got a message from her best friend about how I'm an asshole for treating her that way. But I don't think I'm the asshole for not wanting to go to a party for a lizard. And we do have an edit on this one, which has some replies to the comments. So we'll cover that after the fact. From the second paragraph, it came into this one saying, the gender reveal is mostly a joke and a way to make fun of real gender reveals. So basically it is just a party and you can't see through this. It's just that she wanted to see you and was just using this as a bit of a, a theme in some ways. So yes, you're gonna be the asshole for this situation. And it feels weird saying it with that title. <laughs> But also another part to me that really jumped out to me and it said, I'm not coming to a gender reveal unless it's for a real granddaughter. And then how did you expect your daughter to feel when she's already made a decision to be child free? It felt like, to me, it felt like a dig at your daughter because she is child free. And clearly that's how she felt in that situation as well when she went quiet and claimed that you wasn't supportive of a decision to be child free. And instead of saying, no, that wasn't the case, you turned around and said, you expect me to treat a lizard as a granddaughter. And this, you're totally missing the point of this whole thing. So yes, you're gonna be the asshole to me in this situation. Waffle Ho says, great name, you're the asshole. That's your grand lizard. <laughs> ETA, it was obviously not just about the gender reveal and your daughter wanted to see you. Nancy Whipple says, I seem to be the odd one out, but I say not the asshole. But call her up and invite her out for lunch and make amends. This would be a silly thing to disrupt your relationship over. And for all your animal lovers out there, I have lost a pet and I have lost a child. It's not the same. Yes, a pet is part of your life and things will be different, but it's not the same. Affectionate Data says, everyone sucks here. I can see how your daughter interpreted your statements as criticism. I've been sensitive to similar comments from my own mother because I'm 28 and haven't had kids yet. It's very hurtful. It's also a sensitive topic because lots of people do end up changing their minds on whether or not they want to have kids and women tend to get a lot of criticism for these decisions. No matter what decision they made or if they change their minds or if they actually want to have kids but haven't or can't for many valid and personal reasons. However, I do think it's strange to invite your mother to a gathering of yourself and your friends in order to spend time with her. I wouldn't expect my mum to come to a party I threw for myself and my friends at 23 years old. She wouldn't really be able to spend quality time with you in that situation anyway because her attention will be split between you and everyone else. Would she expect you to mingle and try to socialize with people in their early 20s? I'd be uncomfortable with that and I'm only in my late 20s. It doesn't sound like she explicitly told you, please come to this party because I want to spend time with you. So I'm not sure how you were expected to read her mind and, and know that's what she wanted. You all should just find a day in the next couple of weeks or so and use that day to spend with each other where you can give each other your full attention. Stress Relief says, you're the asshole. Your daughter sounds cool though. <laughs> and sound like, but actually who says and quotes, I got a text asking if I'd come to a gender reveal party she was having. She explained it was a small get together with cake and food for a friend she hasn't seen in a while, with a gender reveal being mostly a joke and a way to make fun of real gender reveals. I told her if that was the case, she should have just called it a gathering and then says she did. She told you it was a small get together to see people she hadn't seen in a while, with a gender reveal being a joke. Your daughter wanted to see you and you refused because your Fifi's got hurt over a silly joke. You don't have a granddaughter and if you carry on acting like this, you won't have a daughter for much longer either. You're the arsehole. So now we cover the edit to see what that says. Edit. In the time I was away, I got many replies and it was a lot to read through. Let me clear up a couple of things. One, my issue is that she said the party was a gender reveal. If she had just called it a party, I would have come. But calling it a gender reveal makes it sound like it's for the lizard. And I'm not going to that, even if it's a joke. Two, I don't know why it matters but the skink of the girl, which is why I said I'm not coming to a gender reveal unless it's for a real granddaughter. Three, even though I don't agree with my daughter for being child free, I have been supportive and only shown mild frustration. The reason she decided to be child free is she claims she's asexual. She just doesn't want one. 
she has emotional baggage and feels unable to care for a real child. She fears pregnancy and she has a carrier gene like me and doesn't want to go through what I did. I had four miscarriages and a highly defect child that died after three months due to the gene. Yes, there has been slight tension between us because I think she just hasn't found the right man. She never dated growing up and her other fears are unnecessarily exaggerated, but it's ultimately her decision and I don't resent her. Four, we haven't seen each other in three months. I'm a single mother and we have always been close, which is why she invited me with her friends. I just didn't want to go to a party with a lizard and if it wasn't for the lizard, she should have called it a party instead of a gender reveal. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. A huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today, getting involved in the channel. You know it means the absolute world to me. I hope you do anyway. Thank you for your love, your support, and your time, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.